Welcome back. You are listening to Subculture After Dark. Well, we know that you love to learn about new music, and there's a band coming out of Germany at the moment that we know that you guys are going to love. They're called Anti Rope, and they've just released their debut album called Amnesia, and we thought we would actually get a couple of members of the band on the phone tonight to talk a little bit about um, this album, but also so you get to know the band a little bit more as well. Welcome to the program, Patrick and Slavin. Hi, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Hi, Dave. Thank you. So, guys, <laughs> like I said, this is probably the first time a lot of our listeners are going to hear your music. So, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the history of the band. Slavin, you or me? <laughs> Uh, you can you can you can do this one. <laughs> okay, yeah. Basically, we started the band uh, many years ago, like around 2015, and um, and the target was more making music with good people, um, uh, like with friends, and 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 have fun. So we didn't ever try to sound some uh, like something we wanna sound like. We just we just did. So um, uh, yeah, and and many years later, <laughs> uh, we thought about recording an album. So we had one lineup change. So I think this lineup change told us, okay, uh, we should change something. Uh, just making music uh, and and never recording an album is maybe not the the right way to do it. So yeah, so we made an album, um, uh, Amnesia, a little bit late, but. Um, yeah, but we made it now. Slavin, you guys have been together since 2015. There was a pandemic in the middle there as well. Did that that affect how you guys were working on this album? Well, um, right before the pandemic, we had this uh, this uh, rhythm section change, and, and then yeah, it was it was kind of. Um, it was kind of two years where everything, I mean, uh, we were a really slow band uh, even before. So uh, as Patrick said, we were, we were uh, playing together. We were, we were writing songs, but we never had a kind of a target. Um, and then the pandemic hit us and we had some time. I had some time to, to, to uh, write some songs. And after the pandemic, uh, we made a decision to... Uh, to take these uh, 10, 11 songs and make an album. So yeah, I think I think those two years were crucial for us because um, we had time to think about uh, our goals. And um, as soon as uh, the pandemic went over, um, we did the album. So yeah, it was kind of a mind changing <laughs> in a way. Yeah, Patrick, what kind of things did you find were um, inspiring you when you sat down to work on the music for this album? Inspiring me, uh, honestly, um, it, it, it's very difficult to say because we're like four people that all listen to some different stuff. So um, um, Slaven is more like into the Seattle sound of the 90s. I'm more like, uh, yeah, the, the thrash metal sound in the 80s, like Slayer, Megadeth, uh, Metallica. Um, my, my sister, who's playing bass, She's more into the disco and house, and um, Toby is more into uh, into a new metal. So we, I think, there's a lot of influences. So everything. So yeah. So to just music inspired us. You know, yeah. I, I I love um, even music like Neurosis, or, but we also like bands like Portishead or something. So I think. Uh, there's a lot of inspiration, but a lot of different inspiration. There's not something very special where, where yeah. that has inspired us. Slavin, what about the lyrics? Was there anything inspiring the lyrics in that during that writing process? Like, was it the world around you, or what was inspiring that those lyrics? Um, yeah, I think... Um, I mean, when I when I when I try to to uh, to write the song uh, and when I try to write the lyrics, it's kind of uh, I have a different workflow as the, I think many others because I tend to pick the first things that <laughs> eventually uh, uh, comes to my mind and then put it on paper. And um, there was never a workaround where I could focus on something I don't know something that bothers me or something that I'm living through right now. It's kind of just a simultaneously picking up the words that are coming out of your head and putting them to paper. And for me, 
eventually it makes sense and um so that's the way i i, I write lyrics there is no 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 um topic or something that i want to cover up it's just um uh, it's just plain words coming out of, of, of your head and put into paper so that's the way i i do those things and uh, and mostly it uh, for me it, it always makes sense so yeah Patrick, I found when I was listening to the album, there was a really kind of intimate and raw feel to this. And then I read that all of the um, instruments were actually recorded live. Tell us a little bit about that process. And is that why this album feels so intimate and raw, do you think? Yes, I think so. Um, uh, as I told you before, I'm, I, 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 I like those this, this metal from the 80s and 90s. And back in the days, uh, all productions were recorded on tape, so you had no loops. And 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 I think this um, the loops for me, for my personal taste. When I listen to the modern metal, many I, I don't say all of them, yeah, but many sound very similar. It's for my taste, it's too perfect. And I think perfection in music uh, will bring a lack of emotion because there's no perfection in the world. So live recording is something what is very authentic. And, uh, uh, and I, I like how the band performs in the rehearsal room. And this was the feeling that I, I wanted to have. Uh, um, yeah, this is maybe a reason why the album has a little bit um, a, a vibe of the 90s, because um, there's no loops. It's, it's, it's a live recording, and, and this is how the band sounds. And, and yeah, but of course, production-wise, uh, the sound is a little bit dirty, and, and yeah, and and, and 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 mixed maybe how you would mix nowadays, but with the spirit of, of 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 the 90s. I think emotions are very very important in music for me, for my personal taste. Slavin, we're about to play the track. Is this the end? In a moment on our show, tell us a little bit about that track. What that what is that track all about? Um, so yeah, it is a funny story, um, and uh, the the riff is from Patrick, and, and and we played this song I think in, back in 2017 maybe 16 17 maybe it was 18 I don't know uh, with the old uh, rhythm section, and it was it was a rehearsal jam, and we totally forgot about it, but the Patrick didn't, so uh, he had it uh, on, on his iPhone, and we were rehearsing uh, a, a couple of years later, and. Uh, um, he was like, hey, I have this song, I have this riff, uh, we need to play this because I, he really liked it and he showed us again and then immediately I, 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 uh, I knew uh, um, what the song is about. And yeah, so the, the, Is This The End is, is really um, a jam uh, song, uh, a rehearsal song and I don't know, it's it's kind of a, for me, it's uh, also when I play it, when we play it, it's kind of a, a emotional journey. It's, 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 it starts really rough and uh, you, have, you have one chorus and then you go to this, uh, the ending of the song when everything kind of, you know, sounds apocalyptic. Um, yeah, and I thought when I was writing the lyrics, uh, <laughs> the perfect uh, song that would be, um, is this the end? Uh, because it sounds like a, like a, um, like a soundtrack to the apocalypse. <laughs> so yeah, that's. I think this the song is is all about the apocalyptic uh, future or something. Yeah, it is. It is such an amazing track, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to play it on our show tonight. Patrick, Amnesia is out now. Um, what are the plans now going forward for the band? Are you hoping to get out there and and do some shows? Have you already started to work on new music? What are the plans going forward now? Yes and yes. Um, so we, we're going to play a show on, on 5th of August and we also started writing new songs. Um, so right now um, it's summer in, in, in Europe. So we will play this release show in Munich and then after, after the summer um, holiday um, we, we will go back in the rehearsal room and, and work on the other tracks for the new record. Awesome. And I guess another big question there as well, Patrick, is are you guys hoping to get to Australia at some stage? Oh, that would be great. <laughs> uh, the, the, you know, 
we we don't think about these things because we just think about music uh, and and we love playing music. So uh, Australia sounds very far uh, to me, uh, but this would be an awesome thing uh, to play one day in Australia with my former band. I played in China and Turkey and everywhere. So uh, I like I love playing in other countries. So uh, but Australia, I never was in Australia, but I think I should do this one day. Definitely. Well. Guys, I guess this is a question for both of you. We are going to play Is This the End right now. What would you like to say to all of our listeners out there, not only before they listen to this great track, but before they go out and grab a copy of Amnesia as well? Uh, yeah, um, um, yeah, I would say them because uh, for me, the, 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 what's special on this record is that you really need to, to uh, get to your, put your headphones or, or, or put it on your speaker and really listen to it from the first track till the end uh just just i just like i did in, back in, in in 90s so uh i think this this album is kind of a, a story for itself it's uh, uh maybe better to to listen to, to the whole album just then to pick the songs and i think that's the way this this album works the best so yeah um <laughs> i would suggest to, to listen to really uh, listen to the whole album so yeah i agree i think it's an album that needs like at least two or three plays yeah. till till um, till you can dive really into it. It's it's not that kind of album that you listen uh, um, like like uh, when you have friends at home and it, it's in the background. I don't think um, it will fit. So yeah, yeah. Um, all I can say, um, I, I would be very happy if many of you can listen to the album and uh, take the time uh, because at least it's it's really it's authentic definitely i agree with that like i said before i absolutely love this album and it is one of those albums that you need to listen to from start to finish so guys thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today it's been an absolute honor having you on the show and hopefully one day we do get to see you guys play live down here in australia